OK, we want to take you to Victoria now because six wind projects off the state's coast are a step closer to reality this morning. Yeah, they could power more than a million homes. So to get more, let's bring in the CEO of the group Southerly 10, which is behind two of the projects, Charles Ratray. Charles, good morning Charles. to you. Uh, there's a few of you, a few different companies that have kind of been given this next step to go ahead for feasibility. What, what's, what happens now? Like, what do you do and how far is it until we see final approval and something actually yep. happening? So it's different for each of the two projects. Um, Star of the South has done a lot of the work already for a feasibility licence, um, but for uh, Kutwut Bratulong, it means uh, measuring the wind, it me means um, doing environmental surveys around bin uh, birds and whales and other sea life, and understanding um, how feasible it is to actually construct a commercial scale wind farm in that area. Do you have any concerns about the impact on the environment, both above water and below water from these projects? Um, we absolutely need to make that assessment. Mm -hmm. And for Star of the South, we've collected over 50,000 data points um, in a marine survey. And we're going through the process of processing all of that data to present uh, our assessment of that environmental impact and have that assessed by uh, government. Because we don't have any offshore wind farms in Australia. What are the challenges you face trying to get this zone up and going? There, there are three main challenges. One is the environmental approval. Um, two is making sure we have the right infrastructure in place to deliver the project ports transmission. And then the other one is Australia is a very long way from the supply chain mm. and we need to make sure it's a great place to invest and attract that uh, supply chain to come here. How important will wind power be uh, as we transition to a renewable energy future in Australia? Absolutely critical, uh, both onshore and offshore. Star of the South or Kutwut Bratulong could provide 20% of Victoria's energy needs uh, and offshore wind is just one part of the solution. Now we know there's been some pushback from proposed projects along the New South Wales coast, along uh, off uh, places like Port Stephens and Newcastle residents saying they could potentially be visual eyesores, they're, they're way out but they argue they could still see the wind farms. How will these wind farms, proposed farms, sit with residents who might be affected by their outlook off the coast in Victoria? We've had incredible support in Gippsland. Star of the South has been uh, in the, the community there since 2017, and a big part of the success of the project is the community's support. Um, the government did move the area back a few kilometres okay. uh, as part of its declaration in having listened to communities, and part of our assessment will include the visual amenity. Mm. So just briefly to wrap up, uh, from now until when it's actually operating and pumping and delivering power, what do, you, what do you reckon? How long? We're ready to meet the 2032 target the Victorian government has of two gigawatts uh, into the grid by 2032. Okay, right, we'll track the project. Charles, thank you.